welcome to the course on VLSI physical design with timing analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about various uh, wavelength estimation technique that is useful for VLSI placement. The content of this lecture includes uh, wavelength estimation, then we will discuss about uh, maximum cot size, uh, how we can find the maximum cot size. The wavelength estimation uh, is one of the most important part whenever you are doing any kind of VLSI placement. So, how we can do that uh, uh, wavelength estimation? Uh, Let us say for example, we have two pins, okay. we have two pins, two pin nets. So, we can uh, find out the Manhattan distance dm between the two points. Okay. Let us say I have one point P1 which is having the coordinate uh, x1, comma y1 and there is a point P2 which is having uh, x2, comma y2. Then how I can find the uh, Manhattan distance is that we uh, here in case of VLSI uh, routing we can place the metal either horizontally or vertically. So, let us say the horizontal metal is uh, basically going like this okay, from here to here. Then the vertical metal is going like this. So, what is the distance from this point to this point is nothing but y2 minus y1 mod, y2 minus y1 mod. And what is the distance from here, from here to this point? So, this distance is nothing but your x2 minus x1 mod. So, the sum of these two lines will give me the estimate of my wavelength. So, here the Manhattan means that either horizontal metal or the vertical metal. So, we do not calculate the Euclidean distance at this point. The Euclidean distance at this point will be denoted by E of P1 comma P2 is basically x2 comma x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square root over which is basically the diagonal which is basically the diagonal. But this uh, we cannot place a uh, diagonal metal in this case. Hence, we always look for the Manhattan distance uh, whenever we are doing VLSI placement. Hence, this is the uh, methodology for wavelength estimation in case of any kind of VLSI uh, routing. So, how we can estimate the wavelength in different methods? So, there are different models are there. Okay. So, we will discuss all of these models. So, one uh, because uh, each step of our placement algorithm there was a requirement is that what is the wavelength after doing this kind of placement. So, the complexity of the wavelength estimation technique will indirectly uh, guide the complexity of the placement algorithm. So, here we have different types of wavelength estimation techniques are there. For example, uh, first one is the half perimeter wavelength estimation SPWL. The second one is complete graph or uh, clique model. Then the third one is monotone chain model. Then the fourth one is star model. The fifth one is called rectilinear minimum spanning tree RMST. Then we have the sixth one is rectilinear stainer minimum tree uh, RSMT model. Then the seventh one is basically rectilinear stainer arborescence RSA model. Then the eighth one is basically a single trunk strainer tree STST model. So, we will discuss each one of the model in detail. So, let us say I have a bounding box with P pins. Okay. We have a bounding box, global bounding box of the placement with P pins is the smallest rectangle that encloses the pin locations, all the pin locations. Then the wavelength whatever we will estimate is the half perimeter, half of the perimeter of the bounding box, okay, half of the perimeter of the bounding box. So, let us take an example here. So, here how many pins are I have? I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 pins are there. But if I connect the 
outer pins and create a rectangular uh, boundary bounding box okay which is denoted by this one denoted by this one then the estimated wall length is uh, basically uh, half of the perimeter so here uh, half of the perimeter here it is 1 2 3 4 and here it is 1 2 3 4 5 so it is half perimeter of wall length is becomes 9 so now we'll discuss about the complete graph or click model so the complete graph or the click whatever how we, we have already discussed about the click or the complete graph whenever we discuss graph algorithms so the complete graph is a, a type of graph there is a a's from each node to the every other node okay so similar concept is applicable here so uh, in this case each pin is directly connected to every other pin so each uh, uh, pin is connected to every other pins so basically this is the uh, number of edges okay this is the number of edges of a complete graph this is the number of edges of a complete graph now uh, we can estimate the uh, wall length of a uh, complete graph or the click model so that uh, it will be basically uh, summation of all the dm of the each node dm will be calculated the way i have explained in the previous slide then there is a correction factor is there 2 by p okay there is a correction factor of 2 by p is there so which will add to actually estimate the length of the uh, wire or the length of the net okay so so basically first we will calculate the all the uh, dm of each of the edge then we will uh, multiply that with a 2 by p fact correction factor to find out the uh, l of the net so this is basically the correction factor So now let us uh, take the same uh, pin configuration and find the uh, what is the uh, basically um, value of uh, the, the wall length in case of a click model. So if you can see here every pin is connected with uh, every other pins actually. So if you can see here we have uh, uh, for example I will take this node it is connected to this one, this is connected to this one, this is connected to this one and this is connected to also this one so in this manner in this manner i found out the this factor and we will multiply 2 by p p is here the uh, 4 here so it, uh, it founds out to be 14.5 this is another uh, well length estimation model now we'll discuss about the monotone chain model so if what is uh, the uh, basically background behind or the motivation behind this uh, monotone chain model is that it connects the pins on a net using a chain topology okay so here what is the concept is that every pin has two degree every intermediate pin has a degree two but the first and the uh, last pin has degree one degree means number of line incidenting to that pin so then we need to what we have to know uh, what we have to do here we sort the pin by either the x or y coordinate and connect them accordingly so we will uh, sort the pin uh, by either x or y coordinate and connect them accordingly so then uh, what is what we found is that it is a very simple model but the uh, thing what we are finding is it overestimates the actual wall length we can see the model here this is the same uh, pin configuration uh, what we need to estimate so this is the stuff basically the start pin and this is the end pin whose degree degree is number of edges connecting to that pin is one okay and uh, other pins intermediate pins such as this one such as this one and this one has degree equals to two but this one and this one has degree equals to 1 because only one edge is connecting to do that pin so here if you can uh, estimate 
the chain length so then it will found out to be 12 ok we will start from one node and connect to the other uh, and we will continue like this. So, here if you can see that in this case we have uh, connected the pins according to the x coordinate ok sorting the first coordinate uh, the minimum x coordinate is having this this pin has the minimum x coordinate then uh, this is the first pin then comes the second x value is uh, increased then the third then the fourth ok. So, we sort the pins uh, according to the x coordinate in this example however, we can do the similar approach for y coordinate also. Now, we will go into the uh, star model ok. So, it consider a one pin ok uh, which is the source node and other all other are the sync nodes ok. So, it is very useful for uh, timing optimization uh, since it captures the direction of the signal uh, how it is flowing from the source node to the all the sync nodes ok. So, it is very useful for timing optimization and uh, uh, every star model uh, uses only p minus 1 edges ok. It only uses p minus 1 edges basically number of edges is less here. So, it is very useful for modeling high pin count nets. Okay, number of edges in this case uh, is only p minus 1 edges. So, uh, it can be useful for modeling high pin count nets. So, let us say you have a number of pins is uh, 1000, number of edges will be 999. Okay. So, it is very simple, but uh, it always is overestimate the well length. Let us take uh, how this star model works. So, this is my uh, source pin, this is my source pin and all other pins are my sync pins. These are my sync pins. So, all, from the source pin we are connecting to the all the sync pins. For example, if you can see here there is a is from the source pin to the this pin, there is a is from the source pin to this pin, there is a is from source pin to this pin. So, here I have 4 pins are there, 4 pins are there and number of edges, the number of edges, edges is 3 which is p minus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3 ok. So, this is the uh, in this method if you do the well length estimation total well, well length is basically is 15. Now, we will look into the rectilinear minimum spanning tree. We have already discussed the uh, uh, minimum spanning tree in case of graph in the first week of the lecture. Here, we are uh, doing the concept of rectilinear means it is uh, not a, any line, it should uh, follow the Manhattan geometry. Manhattan geometry means either horizontal or vertical lines. So, it always follow Manhattan geometry that is why it is called rectilinear and uh, uh, earlier we discussed how to find the minimum spanning tree. The minimum spanning tree we found using greedy algorithms like Prim's and Kruskal's algorithms what we discussed in our graph theory discussions in the first week of the lecture. So, now we found the minimum spanning tree of a graph using Prim's and Kruskal's algorithm and we exploited the Manhattan geometry to find out the rectilinear minimum spanning tree. Then there is one more point here is that if you decompose the p nets to two pin nets and connect the p nets with p minus 1 edges. Why you uh, in case of uh, if I have pin pins why I should have p minus 1 edges? If I add one more edges it will lose the property of a tree. So, it will create a cycle ok. So, if I have a p pins, I should have maximum p minus 1 edges or connections ok. Because if I add one more edge, then it will create a cycle, then it will lose the property of a tree and it is no more a spanning tree. Let us take an example of the rectilinear minimum spanning tree. So, what is happening here is that, so here we are uh, creating a uh, so basically spanning tree first, then we are converting that to a rectilinear version 
and uh, here if you can see there is a edge between uh, this pin pin 1 to pin 2 and pin 2 to pin 3 pin 2 to pin 4. So, the RMST length is uh, found out to be 11 which is close to basically half perimeter estimation model. Now, we have a min, uh, rectilinear stainer minimum tree ok. Uh, basically, uh, he, here it is connects all the p nets as many as p minus 2 additional branching points actually. So, the stainer points are basically the branching points ok. We have p minus 2 additional uh, stainer points in case of a p pins ok and finding the optimal set of the stainer points for any given uh, set is a NP hard problem ok. So, we will discuss how this uh, rectilinear uh, stainer minimum tree model will give me the results. So, here if you can see uh, here this point is my this point is my stainer point this point is my stainer point because here from here we have a branching ok. So, here we have a branching. So, here the total wire length using RSMT is 10 we will discuss about uh, how to find the rectilinear stainer uh, tree uh, in case of global routing in future lectures. So, now there is a concept called rectilinear stainer arborescence RSA model ok. See the, uh, the RSA model have uh, of a pin pin net is also a tree and it has a single source node ok. It has a single source node S naught s naught or s 0 it connects to p minus 1 sync nodes actually it connects to p minus 1 sync nodes. Then we will find out the path distance or the length from this s 0 to each of the sync nodes ok. Let us say for example, s i is one of them. So, I am finding the distance as s naught to s i for each of the sync node from the source node to each of the sync node. I am finding the distance, then I am adding all of them. Computing the minimum length RSA is also a NP hard problem, it is also a NP hard problem. For the same configuration, pin configuration, the RSA can be found out. So, this is a source node, source uh, pin, and uh, rest all these are sync pins ok. So, now what we are doing here now what we are doing here is that from the source pin is S naught to each of the S i I am finding the Manhattan distance. So, from here let us say I am finding from here to here. So, this is found to be 1, 2 and 3 ok. So, this distance is 3. Now, if I have another pin here, so what will happen is that I have 1, 2. So, this is basically 4, 5. So, 3 plus 2, ok, 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, from here, from this point, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is addition of 5 from this point from this point till, till this point is 5 ok. Let us say this is 1 pin 1, this is pin 2, this is uh, pin 3. So, now what is happening is that uh, here what we are doing is that uh, we are finding uh, the distance 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2 plus 5 equals to 10 ok. So, the rectilinear uh, stainer arborescence RSA model will give me total wire length uh, to be 10. Now, basically we have the uh, last model uh, wire length estimation model which is basically your uh, single trunk stainer tree STST model. It consists of a one vertical segment that is trunk and uh, it connects all the pins to that trunk using a horizontal or a vertical segment or branches. It is very interesting, we will uh, uh, look into one example here and uh, the both RSA and 
uh, st sts are constructed in order p log p time where p is the number of pins now let's take the same pin configuration so if you can see here i have a line this is the line whatever i uh, talked about the trunk okay so uh, either it's a one vertical or a horizontal segment but in this case this is a horizontal segment horizontal segment now all the other pins will have a projection to that segment so we have uh, this is one this is one and this is one now i can find out the total wire length so this uh, uh, this uh, method give me a total wire well length of 10 now uh, basically we'll have several different wire well length estimation technique which is uh, plays the heart of uh, our placement algorithm because whenever i am doing any kind of placement i am going and evaluating the uh, wire well length uh, how much i am getting if i do this such kind of placement so which will give me the best uh, output with the uh, uh, means I do not need a very accurate estimation of wire length, but I want to do that in less time. So, the time is important. So, what is the most preferred model in uh, basically wire length estimation is the half perimeter wire length estimation HPWL. Why? Because it is fast. So, this is the plus point, it is fast, orders of magnitude faster than RSMT. And, uh, equal to the length of the RSMT for 2 and uh, uh, 3 pin nets, its uh, value comes uh, close to RSMT uh, for 2 and uh, 3 pin nets, but uh, the margin of error for a real circuit is approximately 8 percent. The RSMT, the rectilinear tenor minimum tree is basically more accurate, but it takes more time to find out the wire length. But uh, in case of HVWL, it is uh, faster, but there is an error of 8 percent. So, there is a trade off between the time it takes to evaluate versus the accuracy. So, if you need more accuracy, you can go for RSMT. If you want to first evaluate uh, the wire length, you should go for the HPWL. So, if you can see here the RSMT, which is giving me the wire length of 10, my uh, HPWL model give me a wire length of 9. So, here the error is close to 10 percent. So, we discussed about the total well length uh, and what we are giving here is that basically the priority to the each of the nets actually. So, here what we are doing priority to certain nets. So, here how we are giving priority basically we give weight uh, assigned to each of the wear. So, the weight uh, total weighted uh, wear length is basically L of P is uh, basically W of net into L of net. W of net is the weight of the net basically how much priority I am giving to that net and L of net is the estimated wire length of that net. So, now if I have a placement okay, if I have a placement P of block A to F and their pins are given here the nets basically N1 to N3 and their net weights are given here. So, what we need to do here is that I need to find out the L of P, I need to find out the L of P. So, if what I need to do estimate the total weighted wire length of P using a RM ST model. So, what is the basically given here L of N1. So, L of N1 is basically I have a DM of A1 to B1 plus DM of B1 to D2. Okay. So, this is the sum of DM of A1 to B1 dm of b1 to d2. So, here if you can see this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, hence this is uh, 4 here. So, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3 here. So, this 3 corresponds to this 3. So, L of n1 is found to be 7, L of n1 is found to be 7. So, basically the, similarly I can find for L of n2, L of n3 then L of P. So, the, whenever I am finding L of P, I have W of N1 which is given in the previous slide. W of N1 is 2, W of N2 is 4 and W of N3 is 1. So, if I 
uh, substitute here, then my L of P is found to be 33. Now we will discuss about the maximum cot size. So, here what is happening here is that um, uh, basically if you can see you have a on cot net. Okay. So, what is on cot net? If I have a pin in L, so I have a this is my total area, this is the uh, basically the vertical cot line. So, this one is your uh, this uh, uh, basically this line is my vertical cot line. Okay, this is a vertical cut line and I have a, a pin here in the left hand side, I have a pin uh, here in the uh, right hand side. So, this L is left and R is right. So, if there is a net connecting the pin uh, from uh, L to R, then it is a cut net because it is cut by the vertical cut line here. So, cut net has at least one pin, if, if I define a net as a cut net, so, it has at least one pin in each L and R side, at least it can have more pins also. And if it is a on cut net, let us say I have another pin here okay. and the, let us say this is connected to, with this one. So, this is a this is basically a on cut net, on cut net, this is very simple. Now, uh, I, I will define uh, two parameters here, uh, basically one is called V of P, okay? one is called H of P. So, the V of P is called the global vertical uh, cut line, V of P is uh, vertical cut line and uh, H of P is the horizontal cut line for the placement P. Now, we have two things, one is the uh, set of the nets cut by the cut line basically this cut. Okay. So, this is the cut uh, net. Okay. So, the set is represented by this psi p of cut, upper case of the psi. Okay. So, this is the upper case of the psi and uh, this is the upper case, do not confuse, upper case will give me the set of the nets. Okay. And the lower case of the psi will give me the number of cut nets, number of number of cut nets, okay. number of cut nets cut by the cut line, okay. number of cut nets cut by the cut line. So, your psi of p, okay, the basically lower case uh, uh, psi of cut psi of p is basically the cardinality of or cardinality of that set of that set. So, now we can define uh, x of p and y of p are the lower bounds on the routing capacity needed by the horizontal and vertical directions. Okay. So, in the horizontal direction, we have x of p how many routing capacity is there y of p in the vertical direction. So, which is found out from the number of vertical cuts and the horizontal cuts. The vertical cuts will give me x of p and the horizontal cut will give me the y of p. So, you can find the max v belongs to v of p, uh, lower case psi p of v will give me x of p and similarly y of p. So, we have uh, two types of uh, design uh, methodology, one is the gate array and standard cells. In case of gate array, your uh, horizontal and vertical tracks are already predefined actually, already predefined because whenever you manufacture that lines are already made. So, uh, basically uh, this x p and uh, y of p are within this capacity. We cannot route something more than that. But in case of standard cell based design, it is basically uh, the designer is designing that x of p and y of p are given the lower bound on the demand, basically how, what is the lower bound on the demand of the horizontal and vertical routing tracks. Okay. So, now here what we are doing is that to improve the total cut size. Okay separately calculate the number of crossing. So, we need to calculate the 
number of crossing of global uh, vertical and horizontal cut lines and minimize that. So, here what we are finding is that what is the number of cut in the uh, basically vertical direction, what is the number of cuts in the horizontal direction and we are minimizing this L of p. Okay, this is my objective is to reduce the number of cut. So, let us take an example here. This is the placement, okay. the placement of p is given and these are the blocks. I have uh, three nets n1, n2, n3 and I have uh, uh, in case of vertical, I have two uh, cut line v1 and v2. Okay. In case of uh, horizontal, I have h1 and h2. Now, all the nets are given n1, n2 and n3 is given how they are connected. Now, what is the uh, goal is to determine the cut size x of p and y of p for, a, uh, for the placement given here using this uh, RMST model. Okay. Now, what is happening here is that uh, if you can see was, uh, this lower case will give me the uh, number, lower case psi will give me the number of element in that set. Okay. So, if I have this one, this is my V1. Okay. If this is my V1, how many lines is cut by this V1? So, this is 1. So, this one is corresponds to this, this one. Now, psi of V2, if I draw the V2, if I draw the V2, this is my V2. So, how many nets are cut by the V2? This is 1 and this is 2. So, this that is why it is 2. Similarly, for H1, so H1 is this one. Okay. If I do H1, then this is 1 this is a one cut, this is the second cut by the H1 and this is the third cut, this line is the third cut. Now, that is why this is 3. Now, H2, H2 is this one. So, if this is the case, this is 1 and this one is 1. So, that is why uh, psi of P of H2 is basically 2. Now, I can find the total number of crossing. Total number of crossing is we'll just add all of them. This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2, it is basically 8. So, now in x direction, what is the maximum? What is y direction maximum? So, in x, whenever I am finding x direction, I need to consider the vertical cuts. Okay. I need to consider uh, whenever I am finding the x direction because these are the x direction. Okay. So, in case of x of p, I have v1, I will consider v1 and v2, which is giving me the maximum cut. So, the, this if you can see here, this net and this net is giving me the maximum cut. That is why x of p is 2. Now, I have uh, y of p, y of p, I have considering the horizontal cut. So, this is my horizontal cut h of 2 and h of 1. If I go here, which is giving me the maximum cut? If you can see here, this is 1, this is 2 and this is, this one is 3. So, y of p is giving me 3. Okay. So, this is basically the uh, total uh, x of p is uh, 2. Here, the x of p is basically 2 and uh, y of p is basically 3. Now, I just do a slight change, placement change it, I, and uh, it will uh, uh, reduce the cut cost. So, if you can see here, I move the block B, okay, move the block B a little bit in the vertical direction. You can see the previous, uh, here it is located here. In this case, uh, this B is located here. Okay. Now, I move this one in the vertical direction. Now, what we are doing is that, now we move that uh, B block in the vertical direction. What is happening here is that, if I move this one in the vertical direction, then then the number of cut is reduced by 2, reduced by 2. Okay. So, if you can uh, look into this H1 is now cutting only one net, earlier it was cutting three nets. So, it is just cut, H1 is cutting only one net, this is the only one net it is cutting, but earlier it was cutting three nets. So, placement plays a vital role in determining the max cut sizes in a partition, whenever you have vertical and uh, horizontal cuts. 
okay so it is very important uh, how the placement plays a vital role finding the maximum cord size so that's the reason we need to uh, estimate uh, the cord size and do the placement such a way that number of cord will reduce in the final placement so in this lecture we discussed about several wavelength estimation technique thank you for your attention